My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and um, this is part two of um, the suspension and uh, suspension geometry 101. And in this one, we're looking at the front suspension. So I've quickly modelled up some fork bodies and this and the other. Uh, I'm missing out the wheels. It, all this doesn't matter, we can kind of just see better if we clear some of this stuff out. The swing arm I slapped together quickly. Um, we'll, we'll be done with this soonish. So at the end of the day, we don't really need to worry about any of these things looking absolutely fantastic. Um, it actually takes away a bit if you can see too much uh, detail and stuff like that. So what we've got here instead is we have uh, frame again, swing arm, and all the usual jubbly bubblies. We've got a wheelbase. We've got ground clearance and uh, rake and stuff like that. Now the rake here is what you'd call dynamic rake which is a bit different than you'd say steering rake um, and the other thing is we're not really looking at forces and stuff yet. What I'm trying to do with these videos, these very basic videos and then we'll move on to other stuff by actually applying stuff like centre of mass so on and so forth because in this we actually do have the ability to show the centre of mass. So what you've got to do is you open the part, just say the frame. I hate this weird thing. Uh, I can't remember what it is. I think it's here. Uh, centre of mass. There we go. And then what you've got to do is you've got to say show centre of mass. I can't remember how you bloody do it now. You've got to add it in can never remember and then when I do it I'm like aha <laughs> and then when I do it I like I'll never forget that and I'm like and I always forget it <laughs> which is just the way it works it's not sketch entities I'm sure it's insert is it features um, I will probably edit this bit out but any road once I remember or I'll look it up I can never remember. There, reference geometries, that's it. There we go. So, it loads in and shows you there where the centre of mass is, but it also shows you, you know, generally where it is. Now, weirdly enough, the material is not specified, and it doesn't matter. Um, it seems obvious when you think about it, but it doesn't matter what the material is. Unless you said, oh, all this end is aluminium and this is steel, then the centre of mass will shift. But you can see that's where the centre of mass is and uh, obviously without the engine it's just the frame I am going to have to stick all of that in um, the engine and all that kind of stuff which I actually do have believe it or not um, this now you'll see has gone yellow and that's the centre of mass of the assembly but again we haven't defined what materials are and all that but we will do that and I don't need that I just accidentally clicked on that um, go away I want you to go away I want the centre of mass to go away, that's why I want it. <laughs> it's a distraction. So when we start looking at the, the dynamics of these things, um, we can you know, start inputting centre of mass and stuff like that. There's obviously no springs in these systems, and one of the things I want to move on to first is stuff like... Um, because forks are very, very simple when you're looking at the geometries of things. And what I mean by it is that you have an, a fixed end point, a, point of the axle, you have a fixed point of the yokes, triple trees, whatever you want to call them, um, you know, pick your fancy kind of thing, and it's just a linear, a linear, it's just a linear component, and yes, they do bend and stuff, but not that we'll ever be bothered with in this kind of series and stuff like that. Regardless, um, when we start looking at the uh, levers and stuff and all the rest of it in the rear suspension that is different because uh, it actually causes different arcs and different motion and we'll get through to that and so on and so forth so same thing as all, as before not as always this is the only the second time we're doing this uh, same time as before what we'll have is we'll have state one uh, and we'll just call this STD that's just the standard oh, it's the sexually transmitted disease whichever one you want so we'll just say the forks uh, no, we'll, we'll say the forks, not the frocks. The frocks are 75. Like I said, these units are not anything. 7517. 
right? And what I'm measuring that from is the axle to the actual top yoke, and the reason why is because you know there's, there's a, this is fixed to the, sh the chassis where this is where the wheel is, uh, the wheel axis. And then we've got a wheel base of one six three. I'm just going along. Uh, we've got a rake of twenty one point eight nine. You notice these are different than before if you can remember them it doesn't matter it, it, as long as looking at this it is in context we've got ground clearance is 28.17 and we've got rear oh, I don't want to spell that weird rear, rear shock is uh, 36.53 so now we have that what we're going to do is this is, uh, I just want to show you something again, which is a bit strange. Now, just imagine if we got these shocks and just imagine we pulled the springs out and we put a lighter spring, right? So, the its initial ability to lift the front of the bike up has diminished. Or let's just say we cut the springs down, keep exactly the same spring, but chop a big bit out of it. Or we change the spaces, right? Which and a lot of you will be like, ah, right. So what happens if we get the fork and we just change the spaces? Now the way you do that in this model is you just, there's no springs in there, so we just pull the shocks down. We're gonna pull the shocks down most of the way because I want to show you what happens. So there, just say we reduce our, our travel to something silly. When I go rebuild, it recalculates all this. So obviously you can see this has decreased but what health, what, what else? So we'll call this, um, we'll call this reduced, no, what? <laughs> reduced spacer slash spring, right? So if we do that, and then we just copy, we'll just copy all this stuff across, and then I'll just replace the numbers so you can have a look what's happened. So obviously our forks have um, lost a lot of length from the, the, the top of the yolk. Our wheelbase has decreased uh, 160 by 59, which you'd kind of expect, right? Because we're basically, in effect, we're pushing we're pushing the wheel out. And this is what's strange about all this. Well, actually, if anything, we're squatting back. The, we're not, we're, we're drawing this a bit closer, but we're actually pushing the back out more. Um, our rake has pretty much stayed completely the same. So you'll see a lot of comments saying if you lower the forks like that, like I've done this, as in re making a space a longer or shorter, our rake hasn't changed, right? Which makes sense because we haven't changed angles. We've just changed, in a sense, the height from the floor, right? Um, what's our ground clearance? Obviously, our ground clearance has dropped an awful lot because the whole thing kind of just squatted down, and our rear shock has obviously decreased in length. Now this is the thing you see. What would happen in this respect, right, is so if we keep this, if we keep this like this, so what we need to do is we need to mate just, oh no, let's not do it like that. Let's mate that surface and that surface. Let's keep it what it was. It's 1.25 basically. So just keep that, that's now locked. Now what happens is, is if we, and this is what would really happen, obviously, the system isn't like this. What would happen is is that our uh, rear shock was 36.35. It's a shame it doesn't do this live, right? So we've just basically got a 36, what was it? 36.35. We've got to get close. As long as it's close. 36.53, sorry. We'll just keep on doing this until I get close. That's probably as close as we need to get. There we go. That's... <laughs> It was 36.53 and we've got 5.7. That will do me. Now if you look at this, so basically we've, we've kept the same shock, right? We've kept the same length between there and there, basically. So this is how the back end was. Now we've done that, which is state two. Um, you know, so this is, this is this one, but this is with an adjusted rear shock. Um, adjusted sh rear I'll just call it that then if we look at everything our forks 
well, the, the, we'll just call it the same. I, I've changed that. What is it? Nothing's. It's all locked, so nothing can change there. So we're, we're just going to leave that. Um, one five nine point seven four. That's our wheelbase. Our rake has now changed to eighteen point four three. So just by lowering the front, and this is why I want to do this, is because our uh, you, you just can't envisage these things. It is so difficult, so we've, we've set that back to 5.7, right, that's good enough for me. So, when you look at this, so basically, if just say, and we'll just use the balls as an example, just if you kept the hull back the same, and you lowered the springs or the shock, uh, the spacers, now obviously I've gone to the extreme, but it's so we can get the biggest difference, so we can see the biggest change. So you can see that our forks have obviously collapsed at the front. That's fine. We expect that's what that's what we've done. And the whole point of these videos is to show how everything changes, right? Show how everything changes. So we've we've changed the front, lowered the, you know cut a section of spring out, put weaker springs in, or we've changed the spacer length in this case by cutting chopping that spacer down. If you do that. What will happen is your wheelbase from, um, let's just get rid of that, right, we'll just pretend we didn't do that, there. So our wheelbase has reduced, right, quite a bit compared to what we saw last time with the rear shock where you could move it up and down quite a lot and you wouldn't get hardly a twitch, maybe one, right, a one, we'll just call these points, these are millimetres, we'll just call them points, one point on this scale, right, but we've lost, yeah, three points just say just by doing this to the front um, which means that the front in this setup with these angles and this angle did start out um, the setup of this swing arm with the the shock and these lengths of these forks are what is um, standard on the Z900 and I'll just show you how I know that all right I've cheated a bit what we've got here is I've got the schematic from the manual which actually shows you the setup where it doesn't work now because I've moved everything around but I literally set these so the rake you can see the rakes off now you can see the shock in the background and the well the wheels everything's moved because everything moves in relation to the chassis but it originally lined up right you can see the chassis lines up all these bits of the chassis line up um, so you can see how things move basically but I set everything up to what basically what the CAD for Kawasaki had which would have been a resting state for the bike or we're just using that as the standard any road so like I say we've messed around with the front it's changed the rake right so we basically we're a lot steeper right so when you want to think about rake is it's like this the smaller this number in degrees because it's vertical right the smaller this number, the more vertical the shocks are. So it started at 21.8, so 22, um, but now we're at 18 and a half, you know, so we're standing more and more, which what that does, it depends in what situation, but generally speaking, if you were just wheeling, pushing this bike around like it was a push bike, it's basically a lot more twitchy at the front, right? Um, it's like, a, if you think about casters, like a shopping trolley, right? If you have, you know, you're, you're pivot straight down it can just turn on the spot instead of need it so you're basically reducing your turning circle not that that matters for court well cornering is something we'll get into that's a different kettle of fish let's carry on where we are ground clearance has uh, reduced we'd expect because we've taken a bit out the front and our re -sh rear shock is uh, is stock is standard so the biggest difference really is our wheelbase has changed a bit but our rake has changed quite a lot Right, um, our ground clearance has gone down a bit, and obviously the forks have collapsed. That kind of thing. So, what happens if you would just say to do the opposite? Right, we were going to um, put such stiff springs in this, right, that it became ridiculous. Right, so this was set at 74 originally. So, let's see if we can get 74. It's, it's close enough. Right, so let's just say we, we got the max amount of travel out of our forks, just as something silly. Right, 
and see what happens there. So we re 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 rebuild this, right? It's all mental. Let's bring our rear down. Let's see if we can bring our rear down. So what, what, what was it at? 36 and a half, basically. So if we rebuild that, let's try and get 36 back out of this. 36. I'm going to try and... You can see kind of what's happening. There we go. 36. We'll leave it there. All right. So we, we jacked the living crap out of our fork. So if you've got your sports bike or whatever and stuck really tall forks on it. Yeah, you see people do with Harleys to a degree when they make these choppers or whatever. What really has changed here? Well, obviously our fork length has changed. Um, so we can get rid of this. Let's just look at our, our, our standard. So our fork has changed dramatically, right? We know that, that's all good and gravy. Our wheelbase has increased by quite a lot. Our rake has d increased by quite a lot. Our ground clearance is sky high, but our forks are a rears about the same. So if you do this, what you'll notice is through all of this, right? So we're, we're two episodes in, and what we've noticed is our wheelbase is mainly affected by our front wheel, right? For a Z900 with a rake, with a, a standard rake of about 22 degrees, right? So, uh, you know, in the realms of 20 degree rake, with a normal setup, with a shock that's, po uh, with a swing arm that's positive, in other words, just imagine this line, if the, the, the swing arm pointed down from the rear wheel, that'd be negative. If it pointed up, that'd be positive. Nearly every single bike is positive, but you, you see what I'm saying, right? from this point of view. Now obviously we've got no weight, no distribution, all that rubbish. We are just talking about from point to point to point to point what happens and what affects things the most. So as we've seen, changing the rear suspension setup, right, if we raise it a bit, lower it a bit, we are not really changing our wheelbase. Where at the front, if we you know, dive down, and you see this is why I want to split these things up, because what this is telling you, and it's easy to see from this, and it's easy to get it in your head, you've seen it yourself now, is if the forks are higher or lower, it affects the wheelbase quite a bit, right? Where if you're swinging the back wheel up and down, up and down, up and down, the wheelbase doesn't change that much, right? So what can we um, extrapolate from that? Well, it's quite simple. When you brake really hard, or when you wheelie and the front wheel comes, you know, basically goes to full extent, stuff like that, um, that's telling you, or when you jump over something or whatever, your wheelbase is changing, right? It's either increasing when you go to full extent like this, or it's decreasing as you brake, which we will we will get to later on of why that's important. Um, the rear wheel can just pretty much do what the fuck it wants with not making much change to wheelbases. Now, someone is going to ask, what about extended swing arms? It's pretty much the same story, right, With in regards to wheelbases. Actually, it's even less of an effect than this because the wheels are further apart and any degree change at this end, which is very slight, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I can't bother doing a model just to show that, but <laughs> you do not tell me. Just get some bloody... Cut out some cardboard, get some bits of string and some drawing pins and work it yourself, kind of thing, because it's a very minute thing. That doesn't mean that the wheel, the rear. This isn't to say that the rear suspension doesn't affect anything. It's just saying how one affects the other. Um, next, what we need to do is we need to start looking at. Um, oh, sorry. So <laughs> before I go anywhere. Uh, I was about to say what we're going to do next. No, what we're going to do is we're going to do this now. What I want to do now is show you what happens when you lower the forks in the yokes. So what was the original? I can't remember now. 75. Was it 75? It says 75. This is why I write these things down. There we go. So 75, like that, but my rear has oh, it's collapsed on it. Right, I'm about to undo that. Where is 70? Right, so that rim there is in line with the bottom of the fork body. That's a good way to, to remember. I'm trying to drive this because it, it's a bit twitchy, as you can tell. <laughs> I should get the side on as well. 
There we go, perfectly silent. It means you've got a bit more control. So we're looking at 36. I should have had this set in a position where you could just like click a thing and it goes back to it. Noob. Bit more. There we go. So we'll call we'll call that clean. Alright, we'll call that what it was. Pretty much. Ground clearance 28.17. Yeah, yeah, we're about right. 36 point, yeah, yeah, we're all good. And then our rake is 21, 21.89, 21.9. All good. So I'm just doing that to make sure that our model hasn't exploded. And wheelbase is 1.63, 1.6338. That's all good. Good. The thing works. <laughs> the worst thing is, is if you put that all together and it turns to porridge. So let's just say, and we'll do the extreme. We'll just say we. it's always easier to do the extreme because... I've I've locked this here at that much, right? So let's just edit that, and then let's just stick. Well, I don't know a millimeter. Really. Like I said, this is a model scale. That's nowhere near enough, is it? Let's just be crazy. Let's just put eight instead. Nah, let's put ten. So let's just say you went absolutely mental, right? What effect is this going to have? Now, obviously, it's raised this, which has pulled up our forks, you know what I mean? Um, and unfortunately, oh bugger, you see I've, I've buggered this now. Put that back to what it was. The reason why I buggered this is because these forks will just fall out. <laughs> 0 0.3, there we go. Right, so do that. So what is uh, sketch? I want that measurement from there to there. What is that? It's 11.85, great. So we need to get that back, basically. So when I tell this to move again to, what do we say, 10, that's it. We need to pull that down to 11.85. So I'll pull this back down. And as you can see, it's moving everything. This is the problem with all of these things. Um, oh, yeah, of course, it was there, wasn't it? 11.85. There we go, that's close enough. Is this still 36 point something? No, of course it's not. <laughs> look, at, look at the state of this kicking out. Oh, Jesus. The stuff you do for YouTube videos, eh? 36, 11, right, we'll call that cool. So, if you go and, like, a moron, right? And obviously, like I say, we're always doing this to the extreme. And the reason why I'm doing it to the extreme is so you can... You know, it, we're getting extreme changes, but at least we can see what is changing and what isn't. So, again, if we compare this to our original... Our fork length, we don't really care because we've 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 tried to keep the same length. So this is all this is doing is keeping everything stock apart from you undo them clamps and slide your forks all the way up. Alright? This is crazy, but you get what I mean. So if we do that, our wheelbase has shrunk, right? So our front wheel has got closer to our back one kind of thing. Because this should all be the same geometry because we haven't changed the rear suspension. Um actually let's just I know someone's going to complain. <laughs> I know someone's going to complain. That's a bit better. Right, try that one. So, uh, forks, yep, yeah, we don't care about that. We haven't really lost anything at all. Uh, this is just the distance from the yoke to the to the centre of the fork, so we get that. Uh, our wheelbase has decreased, right? Our rake has decreased quite a bit, actually. We've gone from basically 22 down to 19. Um, our ground clearance has decreased obviously we've, we've nose dived in the front and our rear shock is like we said we've set that to the same because we're trying to keep this the same so once you've got all this kind of system again you can eat this is what you'd expect the only thing when you do this is um, what kind of messes with your head is how much the ground clear the wheelbase and the ground clearance changes for the rake and stuff like that the front forks are pretty much self-explanatory, you know what I mean, when you do these kinds of things. So, 
this is the other thing right is as a percentage let's just say you you know you did this and you did this which is what we'll, I'll try and do for the next video is just show you a couple of examples of the of if you lower the front and the rear or in this setup how much will you lose in the front to match the same in the rear and is it two to one is it one to one is it three to two is it you know that kind of thing like what are the relationships between the two like for instance the balls lost x amount in the back and x amount in the front right is that a relationship you know if you lost just say let's call it inches because it's simple if you lost three inches in the back and lost an inch in the front is that equivalent or is it not who knows now obviously i don't have a model of his bike and all the rest of it we're just going to use this as a standard and it would only apply to this bike but just as a relationship kind of thing because the z900 um has a, a, a chassis setup similar to a lot of, of you know street bikes road bikes that kind of thing uh, not all of them at all but you know quite a few it's just a, a quite a standard setup and then I'll, I'll show you some of them so what i'll do is i'll make very basic 2d versions of uh some common ones r1 gsxr stuff like that i'll just get some and we'll just compare them and look at the meat look how different they are well more likely look how different they aren't oh right so this was a bit anticlimactic. This one, not much happens really, apart from you just really affecting your rake and your ground, uh, your um, wheelbase, and obviously your ground claims just follows effect from that. Now, in the upcoming videos, what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at um, center of mass stuff like that, and we're basically going to have a um, a plane. You might not know what these look like, so planes are why are we not showing planes so this is a plane you see you see there's a plane there where oh i'm on the wrong thing that's why i won't show me so if you look here there's a plane there that this runs down the side of there's a plane there and there's a plane there and what we'll do is we'll have a plane that in a sense is linked hopefully is linked <laughs> if i can remember how to do it is linked to the center of mass so you'll literally be able to see the center of mass move during stuff like braking, acceleration, blah blah blah, and then we can start to move on um, from this and just start to look at the dynamic systems of things. So we'll be able to, um, through a system of motion, we'll be able to track what happens to when you, you know, doing X mile an hour and you slam on the front. And what I want to do is, the reason why I started using this Z900 frame and these forks and this crew swing arm and so on is because we can actually take some measurements. So what I can do is I can run along at X, mi X a mile an hour, X a mile an hour, X mile an hour, slam on and we can literally measure how much it dives and we can see how, on this how things change. And this is actually leading on to something I'm doing with the chassis. Um, some measurements we're going to take that no one on YouTube or anywhere else that I've ever seen publicly has ever shown, which I hope will be really, really cool. And it concerns chassis and load cells. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.